Welcome to this tutorial on interval estimation for the mean when sigma is unknown. In the last tutorial, we discussed how to create an interval around the mean when sigma is known. However, in many cases, we do not have a known process or historical data to determine the true standard deviation sigma, and therefore we have to use sample data to estimate both the mean mu and the standard deviation sigma. These types of cases are referred to as sigma unknown cases. So for sigma unknown cases, the topic of this tutorial, we use the sample standard deviation S to estimate sigma. We will also use a probability distribution called the T distribution instead of the Z distribution. This T distribution accounts for samples of a smaller size and when samples are used to estimate population standard deviations. The area under a t-distribution looks very similar to a z-distribution. To read the area under a curve using a t-table, we will need two values, the degrees of freedom and the upper tail area under the curve, which is alpha divided in half. The degrees of freedom is calculated based on the information that is used to calculate s, the sample standard deviation. For the types of examples we will be doing in this tutorial, the degrees of freedom will be given as n minus 1. The second value you will need is alpha divided in half. Remember, alpha is the level of significance, which is 1 minus our level of confidence. So if we choose a 95% level of confidence, then the level of significance is 1 minus 0.95, or 0 0.05, and then alpha divided in half is 0 0.025. Let's take a look at what the T distribution looks like. Here you can see three different distributions, two T distributions and one standard normal distributions. The two T distributions have one with 10 degrees of freedom and one with 20 degrees of freedom. And then you can see in purple the normal distribution curve. As you can see, the T distribution for the smaller amounts of degrees of freedom, which usually means smaller sample sizes, is shorter and fatter than the normal distribution. As the degrees of freedom increased from 10 degrees of freedom to 20 degrees of freedom, the T distribution starts to look more and more like a normal distribution. As the degrees of freedom approaches higher and higher numbers, above 100 and approaching infinity, then the T distribution actually converges on the Z distribution. Now let's look at what a T table looks like. Here is a T table. At first glance, it looks similar to a Z table, but if you look more closely, you will see the left-hand column down has the degrees of freedom labeled, and the top row has the upper tail area, or alpha, divided in half. Using those two values, we can look up any area under the curve. We need degrees of freedom, and we need alpha divided in half. Also, if you look at the last line in the t-table, it's labeled infinity, and the values there correspond to the same values as we found in the z-table. If you recall, for a 95% confidence interval, we found a Z value of 1.96, which is the same value you would find if you look up alpha divided in half, or 0 0.025, and infinity degrees of freedom. Take a look at infinity degrees of freedom, and 0 0.025 is alpha divided in half, and you will see 1.96, the same value that was in the Z table. Now, if you recall from the previous tutorial on interval estimation for sigma known, we use this formula, x bar plus or minus a margin of error, which is z times sigma divided by the square root of n. Notice z now has a subscript of alpha divided in half. The subscript can be left out, but it is more accurate to have it there, and now that we understand better what alpha is, and that for confidence interval estimations we need to split alpha in half, then it is a good idea to have this as a subscript. Now let's look at the formula for interval estimation for sigma unknown. Here is the formula. It is very similar to the one above, except note the small differences. First of all, since we are using the formula in the case of sigma unknown, we will need to use s instead of sigma. And since we are estimating sigma using s, then we will need to look up values in the t-table so that we have t instead of z in the formula. Let's see how this works using an example. Let's say we want to draw a 90% confidence interval on the true average grade on a population of students taking a statistics exam. 
Assume we don't know sigma, the population standard deviation. So we take a sample of n equal 20, and we get a sample average of 75, and a sample standard deviation of 15. Now, since we are drawing a 90% confidence interval, then the level of significance is 1 minus 0.9 or 0.10. And then alpha divided in half is 0 0.05. Degrees of freedom is n minus 1, so the degrees of freedom noted here as df for degrees of freedom is n minus 1, which is 20 minus 1 or 19. So let's look up in the t-table alpha divided in half, 0.05, and degrees of freedom, 19. And we get 1.729. So now we are ready to calculate the confidence interval estimate for the mean. Using the formula x bar plus and minus t times s over the square root of n, we get 75 plus and minus 1.729 times s, which is 15, divided by the square root of 20, which gives us 75 plus and minus 5.7992. And that gives us a 90% confidence interval on the mean of between 69.2008 and 80.772. Marking this off on the distribution, we can see visually that the lower limit is around 69.2 and the upper limit is around 80.8. .8. And this represents an interval within which we are 90% confident that the true mean exists. Remember, we don't know what the true mean is. This represents an interval within which we can be a certain percent confident, in this case 90% confident, that the true mean is located somewhere within this interval. The tail areas represent the error that is, there is a 10% chance that the true mean is outside this interval, and half of that error will be in the upper tail region, above 80.8, .8, and half of that error will be in the lower tail area, below 69.2. That concludes this tutorial on drawing confidence intervals when sigma is unknown. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I hope you learned something.